The Amazon is the most incredible place in the world. Especially for nature. Whether it's the giant rainforest or the humongous river, this is a spot where bigger is better. And also scarier is better. And also there's a lot of scary. From the ancient civilization to the spider the size of a hubcap, here's the 20 strangest things found in the Amazon. <sighs> Number 20. Lasers reveal an ancient Amazonian civilization. The Amazon is one of the last great wild places on Earth. But people have been saying for hundreds of years that deep in the forest there's lost cities. Many Spanish explorers went far off the map to find El Dorado, which was thought to be a city full of gold. Some of them never came back. Percy Fawcett, a British explorer, looked for what he thought was the lost city of Z in the early 1900s. He went into the jungle and disappeared, adding his own unfinished chapter to a story that started 600 years earlier. Now the story has taken a new turn, because scientists have found that there really were ancient cities in the Amazon. Even though it's still hard to find urban ruins in thick remote forests, a key piece of technology has changed the game. Scientists in a helicopter 650 feet above the ground use light-based remote sensing technology to digitally deforest the canopy and find the ruins of a large urban settlement that was abandoned 600 years ago around Lianos de Mojas in the Bolivian Amazon. The new pictures show in detail a stronghold of the socially complex Casarabe culture, which has had cities with big platforms and pyramids. A group of towns that looked like suburbs were connected by raised causeways. They were spread out over miles by a huge system of reservoirs and canals that controlled and distributed water. This site is the most striking piece of evidence that the so-called wilderness of the Amazon rainforest was actually very populated, and in some places quite urbanized for many centuries before written history began in the area. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. The Amazon is known for its big snakes, but this big? That's something pretty special right there. Rumors around the world is that this was recently pulled out of the Amazon River. What kind of terrible monster is this? What they captured in a river shocked the whole world. Maybe it's the legendary Titano Boa? I think this snake would make a pretty awesome star of a Hollywood monster movie, but they already did that one with J-Lo and she got eaten. Can they do a sequel? What do you think about this skeleton? Are these giants still thriving deep in the jungle? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now on to the next one. Number 19, Goliath Bird Eater, the world's biggest spider. Spiders are some of the most feared animals on Earth. Most spider species don't hurt people, but there's a few that you should really stay away from. The Goliath bird eater spider is the biggest spider in the world, and so it might just be top of the list of spider scariness. It can weigh up to half a pound and has legs that can reach up to 12 inches long. It lives in the Amazon rainforest, and it's the largest spider in the world. It's a type of tarantula that lives in tunnels on the floor of the rainforest. People say that you can hear the thudding of their feet as they walk through the forest at night looking for worms. This is the largest species of spider. If that doesn't make you shudder, I don't really know what will. Even though they're called bird eaters, they don't actually do that very often. However, there have been stories about them catching hummingbirds. They also hunt snakes, lizards, and rodents, which they prefer to eat in private, being a shy type of spider. Instead of just eating their food out in the open, they drag it back to their burrow, inject it with chemicals that make the organs mushy, and then suck the liquid out of them. Oh. Number 18. Poto, crazy bird with extraordinary camouflage skills. The giant poto is a bird that can change into a tree trunk. It's a true master of disguise. When you see it, it's hard to believe it's real. Or should I say, if you see this bird. It's called the Muppet Bird because of its big head, big beak, and big eyes that make it look like a classic Muppet like Kermit. However, if you're traveling through the forests of South and Central America, you'll need an eagle eye to spot this species. <laughs> 
Their feathers have spots of gray and brown that look like tree bark. This means the poto can sit on a tree branch, squint its eyes until they're completely hidden, and then just go about its business. That's pretty cool. For a little more privacy, the poto fluffs the feathers on its head so they look like a broken branch. Then when it sees something that it wants to eat, it just uses its huge beak to grab it out of the air. Work smarter, not harder, right? Number 17. Man of the Hole The Man of the Hole is a name for a native of Brazil who lives alone in the Amazon jungle. He's said to be the only living member of a tribe. No one knows what language he speaks or what his tribe is called. Officials and the press call him Man of the Hole, but no one knows what his real name is. The name Man of the Hole comes from the deep hole in each of his abandoned homes. At first, it was thought that these holes were meant to trap animals or that the man used them to hide. However, some people have said that they may have had a spiritual meaning to the people who lived in the area before him. The holes are narrow and about six feet deep. People first heard about the man of the hole's lonely life in 1996. One expert says that the rest of his tribe was probably killed in fights with ranchers and loggers in the 80s and 90s. In 2007, the Fundaco Nacional do Indio, which is part of Brazil's government, made a 31 square mile area around him, off limits to development and trespassing. Number 16. Decoy Building Spider In a remote part of the Peruvian Amazon, there's a type of spider with a strange habit. It builds a fake spider on its web out of dead insects and other trash that looks like a much bigger spider than itself. No one really knows for sure, but the idea is that these spider-shaped additions to the web scare away predators. Scientists don't know much about these strange web weavers because the species was only found less than two years ago. The decoy building spider is thought to be a species of the genus Cyclosa, which itself was only discovered in 2012. So why do the spiders make these fake webs? The working theory is that these fake spiders trick and scare away damselflies, which eat small spiders but stay away from bigger ones. The Pseudostigma today family includes these bugs, which are the biggest damselflies in the world. From a distance, they look sort of like dragonflies. The Cyclosa makes a fake spider that's bigger than the spiders that the Pseudostigmatids will eat. This helps it avoid getting eaten by these spider experts. It's pretty clever. Number 15. Macaw Clay Lick The hyacinth macaw, which is 3 feet 3 inches long from beak to tail, isn't just the longest parrot in the world, it's also one of the most colorful. Macaws stay with the same partner for life in the wild, and they often travel in small groups of up to 8 pairs. They sometimes get together in large groups on clay piles called macaw licks. They love licking up some tasty clay for healthy minerals. They're also known for their very loud screeching and their ability to imitate other sounds, including the human voice. Because of this, they're super popular as pets. People also like them because of their neat color scheme. There's a bright blue color with yellow spots around the eyes and throat. Unfortunately, the wild population of this bird is almost completely gone because it's so popular as a pet and because its habitats in Brazil are being completely destroyed. Number 14, Corpse Flower. With a name like Corpse Flower, you can be pretty sure that the Titan Arum won't smell like a rose. But there's no way for you to understand how bad this flower smells unless you get up close and personal with this stinky plant. The best description is a dirty diaper left out in the sun on a hot day mixed with a plate of rotting fish and onions that are 10 years old or like a cow that's been dead for a week and has been dumped in a sauna. While the smell is too strong for humans to handle, dung beetles and flies smell it as a chance to get some tasty food. It tricks them into thinking there's rotting meat somewhere where they can lay their eggs, which helps the corpse flower get pollinated. So we don't like the way it smells, but flies love it. The corpse flower comes from Indonesia and likes high heat, high humidity, and a ton of space. Pollinators squeeze into the tight spaces of the corpse flower because of the smell of death being so strong. In the process, pollen gets all over them. If it goes well, they'll spread pollen to the next stinky flower they come across. If you ever get a chance to smell one, you should take it. It only blooms for 24 to 48 hours at a time, and that only happens once every six years. Number 13, Pink Dolphin. When it rains in South America in the spring, the Amazon River and its tributaries start to overflow. 
In the end, thousands of square miles of rainforest are flooded, making a huge sea covered in trees. The Amazon River Dolphin, also known as a boto, swims into this sea, which is only there for half the year. Botos have the same cheeky smile as bottlenose dolphins, but their heads are bigger and their beaks are longer and thinner than their marine relatives. Also, the males can be pink, which is amazing. People think that the color comes from scar tissue from rough games or fighting over territory. When it's time to mate, the water has gone down and the males and females are driven back into the river channel. The brighter the pink, the more attractive the males are to the females. During the wet season, on the other hand, females go far into the flooded forest to get away from the aggressive males. Botos can swim easily between trees and through tangles of branches because their neck vertebrae aren't fused. This lets them bend up to 90 degrees. Their long snout also helps them find crustaceans in the mud of a river or catch small fish by darting between branches. They use echolocation to find their way and find food in the dark, murky water. Botos are also the biggest of the four types of river dolphins. They can grow to be eight feet long and weigh up to 450 pounds. Number 12, Jabutakaba. The Jabutakaba is a Mitrase tree that grows only in Rio de Janeiro, Goias, Minas Gerais, and Sao Paulo in Brazil. Myrciaria species are native to Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Peru, and Bolivia, and they're often called the same common names. Fruits with purple-black skins and white pulp grow straight on the tree's trunk. They can be eaten raw or used to make jelly, jam, juice, or wine. The fruit's actually a big berry with a thick skin that's three to four centimeters across. The tasty, gelatinous, white, or rose-colored flesh is wrapped in a thick, purple, and sour skin. It has one to four big seeds that look different depending on the species. When the seeds are kept at room temperature for 10 days, they stop being able to grow. Brazil's been growing them since before the arrival of the Spanish, and it's now grown for profit in the middle and south of the country. More than just the temperature requirements, what makes it hard to grow fruit commercially in the Northern Hemisphere is how slowly the fruit grows and how quickly it goes bad. So this is a rare fruit that you're gonna have a hard time trying anywhere but the Amazon. Number 11. Tear Drinker Butterfly What you're seeing right now is a rare natural event. In these incredible images, Julia butterflies can be seen drinking the tears of turtles and alligators. You might be disappointed to learn that these butterflies aren't here to comfort the crying reptiles. Instead, they're here to eat them. Well, just a part of them. This is called lacryphagy, which literally means tear feeding. As weird as it sounds, this is one way for butterflies to get the food they need. In fact, more than 100 different insect species have been seen doing just this. They're looking for sodium and proteins, mostly in cattle, horses, deer, and elephants, but also in caimans, turtles, and birds to a lesser extent, even humans. About 25 types of insects, mostly moths, are known to drink from people's eyes. In teardrop drinking butterflies, the proboscis acts as a suction organ that's especially equipped with spines and a barb for grip, but with a flexible tip designed not to irritate the victim unnecessarily. Number 10, Nine Mile Pre-Flood Rock Art Found. Researchers say that pictures on rocks in the Amazon rainforest show the area's first people living with huge ice animals. It's thought that the paintings were done between 11,800 and 12,600 years ago, near the end of the last ice age. On the three rock shelters on the northern edge of the Colombian Amazon, thousands of these paintings have been discovered. The first dig took place in 2017 and 2018, but the study is just coming out now. The paintings show animals that no longer exist, such as the mastodon, an elephant-like animal that lived long ago, giant sloths, and ice age horses. There's also paintings of snakes and birds, as well as geometric shapes, human figures, handprints, and hunting scenes. Researchers say that the red paintings, which were made with pigments from the scraped ochre, are part of one of the largest collections of rock art ever found in South America. The pictures show how people lived in a time when they hunted huge animals that are no longer around. They moved into the area when the weather was changing a lot, which was changing the plants and the way the forest looked. The Amazon wasn't quite the tropical forest we know today yet, but it was still clearly an amazing place with a lot of massive animals. Number 9. Jesus Lizard 
If you were to ask a Bible expert how Jesus Christ walked on water, they probably wouldn't have an answer for you. But scientists now know how the so-called Jesus lizards are able to do it. The basilisk lizard can run on water because it's super fast and has special feet. This makes it super dangerous to insects, which is why people call it the Jesus Christ lizard. Most animals that try to walk or run across water immediately sink. This is because water doesn't offer much support or resistance like solid ground does. But this lizard does something really cool. There's three parts to a stride. The slap, the stroke, and the recovery. During the slap, the foot moves mostly down and vertically. During the stroke, it moves backwards. During the recovery, the foot moves up and out of the water and back to where it was at the beginning of the step. During the slap phase, the lizard's foot plunges straight down, pushing water down and away from the foot and making a pocket of air around the foot. This gives the lizard its support. During the stroke phase, when they move forward by kicking their leg back through the water, the slap provides enough force to keep the lizard's bodies above the water surface. And if you see one of these lizards turn water into wine, it's, it's probably not wine, it's probably blood. Number eight, leaf insect mimics a plant leaf. These interesting fakers are actually leaf insects. They hide from predators by trying to look like something else. Some species have marks like holes that look like spots of disease or damage on a leaf, while others just look like fresh leaves. They're called super evolvers because their appearance changes over time to fit the environment. I'm sorry to make you think that you might have killed an insect every time you step on a leaf or hear a crunch from now on. I feel you, I'm in the same boat. At least most of them live on the islands in the Indian Ocean, in parts of South Asia and Southeast Asia on the mainland, in Papua New Guinea and in Australia. So unless you live there, you probably don't need to worry about it too much. But some people also say they live in the Amazon, even though we don't have proof of that yet either. They protect themselves from being eaten by using cryptic mimicry, which is made possible by evolution. It might sound like a magic trick, but cryptic mimicry is the ability to hide, and it's what makes them so interesting. Number seven, Victoria Amazonica. Giant lily pads in the Amazon are the biggest and strongest floating plants in the world. Their composition gives people ideas for building things like skyscrapers and wind turbines in the real world. Scientists, architects, and artists have been drawn to the beauty and size of the giant Amazonian water lily for a long time. But until now, no one really knew how the leaves could grow to be 10 feet across and strong enough to hold the weight of a small child. A group of British and French scientists studying how the giant leaves work found a network of branching veins that look like girders and are made to be strong and support the structure. These plants could help engineers and architects make better buildings, especially ones that float. From above, an Amazonian water lily leaf looks like a big green dinner plate with the edge turned up. From below, you can only see where its beauty and strength come from. The underside of the leaf is completely covered with a fractal network of sharp veins that radiate out from the central stem. As the main veins get closer to the edge of the leaf, they thin out and split into smaller veins. They're crossed by other veins that make concentric circles and are only found in this type of water lily. The effect is striking. The dark green or red of the leaf stands out of the intricate web of yellow veins. In 1801, British explorers in South America found the giant lily, and it quickly became popular in Victorian England. Honoring the young Queen Victoria, its genus name was changed to Victoria, and the plant became a symbol of the British Empire. Which makes no sense, but what part of colonialism does? Number six, the bullet ant. These ants are about an inch long and are much bigger than their leaf-eating relatives. They also can't lift as much as their relatives, but their power lies elsewhere. You might have guessed the name bullet ant doesn't mean that it's kind and gentle. Instead, it means that it's powerful. It's got a sting. There's a Schmidt pain index, which is how they measure how painful different insect stings are. And they say that the bullet ant is the worst of all. The bullet ant is the only bug that gets a maximum score of four on the pain index. Schmidt says that getting stung by a bullet ant is like walking over flaming charcoal with a three inch nail stuck in your heel. Other people described it as like they were getting shot, which is how the name bullet ant came about. The pain typically lasts for at least 24 hours, and it could cause trembling, swelling, and a fast heart rate. Surprisingly, one Amazonian tribe has a way for young boys to prove that they're men by wearing gloves with 80 of these tiny monsters shoved inside. 
You have to stand there and keep them on for five minutes. Kudos to the Satsure Mawe people. That's one tough way to become a man. I think I'll just stick to the Western tradition of getting a driver's license or doing something extremely stupid. Number five, plastic eating fungus. Synthetic polymer made plastic products can't be disposed of, so they end up polluting the environment and posing a global ecological threat. Part of the problem can be solved by reusing and recycling plastic to make new products, but there's so many plastics that can't be recycled and so much plastic waste to work with that it's far from a solution. Some types of plastic can take a thousand years to break down through chemical, thermo, photo oxidation, and biological processes. And that's a long time. Cue the mushroom that eats plastic. Scientists have found that microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes can help get rid of waste plastic on Earth. More than 90 types of bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes can break down plastic. Pestiloptiosis microsporas mycelium can eat plastic as its main food source and live without air or light. Because of this, it's a great mushroom for cleaning up the plastic in our landfills and other places where it's been thrown away. In another report, scientists in London found that even though the mushrooms aren't edible, they can be used to make things like furniture and building materials. Researchers also found that mushrooms that eat up plastic clean up pollution in the soil and turn waste into biofuels. It sounds like this has a lot of potential to help us with a very serious problem. Number 4. Poison Dart Frog this tiny frog has a body length of between 0.5 and 2.5 inches. It can't be all that bad, right? Wrong. Predators know not to mess with this little frog because of its bright colors, which range from bright blues and greens to yellow and black with a ton of other combinations. You can find them in the jungle of the Amazon. It lives in places like moist lowland forests that are subtropical or tropical. The poison from the arrows of native tribespeople was made from the poison dart frog, which is how it got its name. When an arrow is shot in an enemy, it not only goes through their skin, but it also contains some of the most dangerous poison in the world. It's strong enough to kill 20 adult men. Even though some snakes have gotten used to these frogs and will attack and eat them, this is a powerful way to keep predators away. The poisons are made up of many things that have important medical uses, like the painkiller that's 200 times stronger than morphine, heart stimulants, and substances that make you feel less hungry. Number 3. Silkhenge a mysterious silk structure in the Amazon called a silkhenge has just been caught on a new high-resolution video that's truly amazing. Since the first one was found in Peru in 2013, scientists have been fascinated and confused by these strange tiny structures. Each one is small enough to fit on the tip of a finger. The name comes from the way the central cone tapers down and is surrounded by thin silk pillars that look like Stonehenge. Spiderlings break out of the web towers on the video, showing that the strange structures protect the spider egg sacs. However, the spider species that made the structures hasn't been found. High resolution pictures showed amazing details, like strands of silk going from the top of the central cone to the bottom of it. Scientists still don't know if these strands are important for the structure or if they're just left over from the building process. The details in the video could help arachnologists figure out what kind of spider it is by showing what kind of silk it spins. These beautiful stalks, which form a fence around two or three eggs, might be meant to keep parasitic wasps from getting inside of the spider baby. For now, there haven't been many silkhenge finds, but each find gives scientists a little bit more information about this mysterious monument building spider. Number two, glass frog. A small frog about the size of a quarter jumps from one plant leaf to the next while showing off its little belly. The skin on the bottom of the frog is clear. So when the amphibian jumps, you can see its heart beating and some of its organs. This is a reticulated glass frog, an animal with a lot of really cool secrets to share. Scientists still don't know why these frogs' backs have skin that lets light through, but they think that the spotted pattern on the amphibian's back is supposed to look like a bunch of eggs. This pattern helps the males protect their young by making it hard for predators to find the nest. The males are also very careful with the eggs of their mates. The group of eggs that a female lays on the underside of a leaf is called a clutch. The eggs are held in place with a jelly-like substance. After that, the female takes off and the men go to work as guards. They keep an eye on the eggs around the clock until they hatch, protecting them like threats from wasps. Wasps that get too close to the egg cluster have even had the frog kick them away. Number 1. 
the Amazon's boiling river that kills anything that enters. Peruvians have been talking about a river in the Amazon that burns so hot it can kill people for hundreds of years. The story goes that Spanish conquistadors made the mistake of going into the rainforest to look for gold. The few men who made it back told stories about poisoned water, snakes that ate people, and a river that boiled from the bottom up. And it turns out they were telling the truth. Since he was a child, Peruvian geoscientist Andres Ruzo has been interested in this story. But he didn't start to wonder if the river was real until he was working on his PhD project about how geothermal energy could be used in Peru. The water in the river is rainwater as shown by chemical tests. Ruzo now thinks that the heating process happens far upstream, maybe even up in the Andes, and that the water is heated by the Earth's geothermal energy as it steeps down into the ground and flows downstream. It ends up in the Amazon River, where the water's boiling. That means that the system is part of a huge hydrothermal system that's never been seen anywhere else on Earth. So, would you want to visit the Amazon? Do you think giant snakes are hiding there ready to take over the world? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff that's showing up on screen right now. See you next time.